You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, sponsored by Absolute Mortgage, a division of Finance of America Mortgage. Now in the studio, local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour. I am your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, January 9th show. I bring into studio each week the best of the best experts in all areas regarding your financing and your money and help us in today's economy. If you're listening to my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. You can call the show at one 855 411 Again, that's one 855 Four hundred eleven fifty, or online at themoneyhour.com and you can connect with the amazing guests that I have had in studio or give suggestions on any topics you'd like me to bring into studio. Right now I have Brittany Hannigan with Northwest Group Real Estate and we're going to talk about sellers and maximizing profit and the things to do and not do. Brittany, thank you so much for uh, joining me in studio. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you today. I am too. I've uh, definitely give my my sellers a uh, wealth of information in that arena. And a little background about Brittany. Brittany has been practicing real estate since 2007 and, and is a member of the National Association of Realtors. She's graduated of the University of Washington, earned two degrees in communication and uh, sociology with the emphasis on sale and sales and marketing. Now, Brittany, Brittany began her career in 2007 working in as a assistant in one of the top with one of the top agents at Windermere Real Estate in Bellevue, Terry Foster, which I've had Terry and her team in studio before. Uh, knowing this was the path that she wanted to continue in. Now, Brittany joined an elite team at Northwest Group Real Estate in 2008, where she took on a role of client marketing, uh, client marketing efforts and helped create a seamless experience for Northwest Business uh, Grew. Brittany shifted out of her marketing role to to focus 100% on clients and her marketing background and experience working with such um, successful producers gives her the knowledge and the skill to serve as a full-time broker representing a wide range of clientele from first-time home buyers, clients downsizing, move up, re relocating and resell investors. And you know, Brittany, I think that's one of the best ways to get into this industry because there is so much that's happening and coming in new and not having uh, not be not doing business and seeing how it's done right. It's really hard to get that experience. So when you come in, you work with a an industry leader, which Terry is in in the uh, market, and you learn kind of how to get through all of these things. You become an expert just from being in that uh, that environment. So I think it's an awesome way to get in. And thank you again so much for coming in. So I want to start out with. Um, a common question that my listeners have that are thinking about selling is whether they should be waiting till spring to sell their home. Absolutely. This is a question I get quite often. Actually, it's um, kind of more when I began in the market back in 2007. I think it was just a common uh, perception that a lot of sellers thought, you know, was the best time to list your home because, mm -hmm. you know, the flowers are blooming. Everything just shows that much better. But the reality is, is Seattle, we've had such low inventory that really a lot of the buyers that wait until the spring to buy, you know, they're not finding the properties that yes. they anticipate anticipated to get. So they're still looking in the summer and the buyers that started their search in the summertime are looking, you know, well into the winter. And so mm -hmm. it's really taking that much more time to find your desired property. Um, so with that said, I always, you know, I tell sellers, you really can list any time of the year, just given how low the inventory levels have been. Um, with that said, I do recommend, you know, hold off during the holidays, Christmas, uh -huh. um, even December. I mean, it's kind of a tough month with people traveling and so much going on that it's typically, if they were wanting to list in December, I'd say, hey, let's just wait till the first of the year. Yep. Um, same goes for, for Thanksgiving. And Labor Day weekend, you know, weekends where people, families are getting ready to get their kids back in school and they're just traveling, you know, they don't have the time to really look at, um, go out there and house hunt. So it makes total sense. Really year round, it's a, a common misconception that you need to wait to the spring, wait until the springtime. Um, you know, I'd encourage all sellers, you can list your property year round, just mm -hmm. avoid, you know, the holidays and really the busy, the hustle and bustle when, when 
families and uh, buyers out there don't have the time to simply get out there and look. Yeah, and if you're looking at, as Brittany said, what type of market that we're in, you've got to consider right now as well with the low interest rates and the low inventory, as you're saying, it just adds that even additional benefit to the fact that we're in the beginning of the year and people are coming in and starting to do exactly. things that they want. Yeah. So what about the preparation, Brittany, um, for home? If I've got a, uh, a seller listening that's asking, well, you know, when should I start prepping my home and uh, what do I do there? Uh, so it always depends on what their timeline is. And, you know, the sooner you know that you want to list your home, the better, the more the more time you can do can provide yourself to get the home ready, uh -huh. uh, the better. One thing, if we do have, you know, at least six months in advance, sometimes what I'll do for sellers is I'll suggest that they have their home pre-inspected. So they actually hire an inspector to come out and take a look at any potential problems. You know, if the roof has... Um, you know, it's kind of at the end of its life or if the gutters need to be cleaned and any maintenance issues, because uh -huh. that way the seller, they know upfront issues that they may be facing when it comes down to having their home listed and then have buyers going through the inspection process. So this is just, it's one way to basically address any potential problems that mm -hmm. a seller could do their due diligence and take care of prior to getting it listed and bringing it on market. Because ultimately, as a seller, you really want your home to appear and remain as, um, you know, you want it to be seen in the best light. So although, yep. you know, you may be investing some money up front, this is also, uh, you know, money that you'll save in the end because any buyer out there would come across these issues during their own pre-inspection or inspection anyway. Makes total sense. Now, what about um, finding temporary housing and going out and renting so that your house is vacant and you're not there? Or what suggestions do you have around that? Uh, well, I think in an ideal world, it's best to have your, vac your home vacant and okay. just ready to show. Um, I always encourage my sellers, if they are going to be living in the home, during the sale of it, um, I've I've often had clients they'll move in, you know, maybe with their in-laws temporarily, or um, even go on a vacation for a week, just so they're out of the home and there's they can maximize the the showings for any potential buyer. Uh -huh. um, so that is the ideal situation, as we know, and as as most people have been hearing out there, it it still is a seller's market. So yep. you know, if the home is priced properly, it's going it's going to sell in this market. And that's what I say is the house is going to sell. It's just a matter of what profit are you going to make. So I would imagine, you know, going through that with you and finding out how much more money am I going to make if I do temporary housing versus staying here, and then you can weigh it out if it's convenient for you or not. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, so what are your feeling as far as a seller's market and what we're going to see for 2016? Um, continuing to be a seller's market? What is your, uh, what's your crystal ball say there? I mean, I think well, you're more of the expert on this end, <laughs> but um, I should be asking you. Um, but in reality, I mean, I really, I don't foresee anything changing in the foreseeable future. Um, it's been a seller's market for quite a while. And I think with so many people and com corporations moving into Seattle, mm -hmm. there's so much growth. And I notice, you know, on a daily basis, um, from rental properties to to purchasing a property, rent has only been increasing. Yes, The values of home, I mean, they're steadily, they've remained somewhat steady, but have also increased slightly. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't, there's way too many buyers out there in this market and not enough inventory that we still, we're not going to have any dramatic change in the foreseeable future from yep. My belief. I, I totally agree with you. And what about clients in uh, how you're coaching them and pricing their home? Because you see clients that price higher to to feel that they're make sure that they're not getting a low ball offer, and then you have clients that are pricing strategically lower than what the market. And so, what is and there's a, there's a spot there that you should be. Can you talk to my uh, listeners about that? Absolutely. Yeah. It's definitely it's the sweet spot. You want to price at market value. And this is something that I cannot stress enough with my sellers. Um, oftentimes they have inquired, well, it is such a seller's market. So can we price higher? And mm -hmm. I always say, you know, the market, let's gonna, we're going to price it at market value. The buyers out there it will di dictate how much you get for the home. But mm -hmm. ultimately, if you start too high, there's going to be buyers who already know that you know, prices will potentially go above the list price. So they'll un immediately just disregard it if they think it's already out of their budget or yeah. priced too high. So never, I mean, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot if you if you overprice. 
Um, on the flip side, it's also a, yeah, you can have a lot of trouble if you underprice, which okay. um, sadly, a lot of listing agents are encouraging their, their sellers to price low so that it can increase the, the buyers and the interest out there. But the problem is, is um, I mean, why are you going to waste all these these buyers times put yourself in their shoes and mm -hmm. if your home's worth five hundred thousand dollars don't list it at four hundred thousand dollars just to get more interest okay um I, I mean really what it comes down to i'll tell my sellers i'll say if we list your home at five hundred thousand are you going to be comfortable accepting their price you never want to accepting you know this as an offer sure. price i would never list a home and have my sellers expect to get more okay. and when they actually receive a list price offer them to be disappointed yeah. so you have to be realistic price it at, at market value and that's why you hire an agent to do mm -hmm. you know all of their due diligence look at all the comparables in the area and see what things are actually going for makes sense so let's talk about uh an offer review date can you can you explain to my listeners what that is and should they be doing it Absolutely. Yeah. That's another thing that a lot of sellers are not even familiar with when they're, uh, we're discussing the process of listing their home. And it's pretty common in this market, uh, especially with, you know, for how little inventory there is, uh -huh. when something pops on the market, usually buyers, you know, their agents will encourage them to take a look as soon as possible. And um, this is a pro problem that we ran into four years ago or so. I remember having clients feeling so rushed and just them needing to, oh my gosh, we need to get our pre-inspection done yes. and write an offer. We need our pre-approval so we can write an offer in the next hour. And it's, you know, they really did not have time to even think it over. And so um, it became more of a common practice a couple of years ago that the sellers and the listing agent, they would bring the home on the market and actually set an offer review date. So okay. they would state, um, you know, for instance, we're going to list the home on Monday and anywhere from five days to two weeks later, we'll look at offers. So it gives any potential buyer the opportunity to have a pre-inspection conducted, mm -hmm. a sewer scope and, and really do their due diligence and, and figure out that they are ready and, you know, a hundred percent motivated to move forward on okay. this home. So it's, um, kind of a case-by-case -case basis, whether you want to set one for the property. And it also gives a chance and time for those offers to all come in to maximize the seller's. Yeah, yes? it's, exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. it's to the seller's benefit and it's also to the buyer's advantage. So they're not feeling rushed and yeah. just a sense of, you know, making a irrational decision in the matter of 30 minutes. Of course. So Brittany, I got a, a minute before I wrap up the show here. Uh, what advice would you have for either my sellers, because you represent sellers and you represent buyers. So in um, advice that you would have somebody listening right now that's either looking at selling or buying a property. I mean, I think it ultimately comes down to what is your next move. And while it is absolutely a seller's market, you have to think about what are you going to do next? Are you going to sell your home at a premium and then be back in the buyer's pool? Um, I mean, it's it makes sense for a lot of sellers and then, you know, who turn into buyers at that point, especially mm -hmm. if you're doing a move up or I've had some clients where they sell and they're just simply wanting to rent for a while to determine what they want to do next, whether it be in a year or two years uh -huh. or if they're moving. So, um, you know, if you have any interest in selling, I encourage you to, you know, reach out to your, your preferred realtor, uh, real estate agent. Um, I'd be happy to, you know, assist you as well. And, um, but ultimately just, you need to have the discussion of what your home is worth and, yes. and what your next next step is. Great advice. And that's the biggest thing with the show. And the reason why the show is here is to make sure that you have all the experts that you need in any, any area regarding your financing, because knowledge is power and preparing up front is powerful as well. So if you want to connect with uh, Brittany, you can call the show 1-855-411-50 or you can go online at themoneyara.com and connect with any of the guests that I've had in studio today. And I want to thank all of you for being here. And I want to thank you as my listeners. Uh, this is your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, signing off for the day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And as usual, I will be here next week, same time, same place, right here at 1150 AM, KKNW.